Hello everyone, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my lecture video on uh, printing numbers attractively using Python. Uh, I'm creating this for my uh, IS430 course at the iSchool at the University of Illinois. And uh, my comments here are going to be most appropriate for this course and the point where we are in this course. But if you're a YouTuber and you found your way here, uh, uh, you're welcome to stay with the caveat that I'm really uh, gearing my comments uh, towards our course. Okay, so um, this is the spring of uh, 2022. Uh, we're currently in week three and we're on the unit from, from the Zell uh, chapter three computing with numbers. And uh, this uh, chapter really doesn't do much uh, to talk about how to format numbers um, in order to have them print the way we would like to print. Okay, uh, it turns out we do a lot of our work with floating point values in uh, Python and uh, floating point values um, uh, typically have excess decimal fraction uh, uh, digits. And there's a couple of reasons why they do. And when we print them out, they're at least unattractive and sometimes they're misleading. Okay, and that's uh, the motivation for what we're going to learn how to do uh, here. All right. Okay. So, uh, first of all, in the readings, uh, I've got a couple of things I've got. It, it turns out that the best resources on formatting um, are in these, uh, oh, one of them is this uh, uh, Jablonski article in Real Python. Okay, so I put that on the reading list. And it, it turns out that Python has um, three approaches to formatting um, strings from float uh, values. And the most recent and the best, and the one that we're going to follow in our course, is called f-strings. So this article explains uh, all three approaches, and um, it... Uh, really uh, concludes you ought to use the F strings. Okay. Uh, there's another article here. Uh, I guess we jumped to another. Uh, oh, here we are. There's another article here from another uh, blog by uh, this uh, person, uh, Best. And uh, it's called formatting numbers for printing in Python. And it does a better job of being sort of a resource of, if you're using the f-string approach, which is, again, the one we're going to use in our course, um, what are all the formatting strings you can use in order to get numbers uh, to appear the way that you would like them to? So I put these two on our weekly schedule. And uh, I think you're going to find them uh, a helpful place to go back to when you forget the details of how we're doing this. Okay, and one other thing that I've got, I don't have it up yet, but there's, there's, there's a post by. I've created a project with some code in it, and that's what I'm going to be going through in this lecture. And it's called... Um, uh, demonstration uh, project to supplement Zell 3E Chapter 3. Uh, so that's where these code examples are coming from. And again, if you're in my class, you're going to have a link here where you're going to be able to download that. Okay. So let's uh, let's pull over um, the first of these example uh, codes. And the first thing I'm going to say is um, um, 
the um oh that's not the one i wanted i wanted uh this uh okay so uh let me let me show you let me walk you through okay ready to go now sorry about that so i'm gonna run this okay and here's what i've done uh i've got some variables so what i want to do is i want to do some simple uh calculations where i've got a quantity 25 of bags of sugar that weigh five pounds per bag and i want to calculate the total weight in pounds okay and then I, I want to print that out okay so that's what i've executed so far and you can see you can see that the answer is 125 which is helpful but it's not really user friendly okay uh what we really would like to do is we'd really like to be able to print out a sentence in the, you know that says i have so many bags of sugar at so many pounds per bag for a total of so many pounds uh period okay and um good uh usability and interaction design would say that you'd like to be able to format that user-friendly message okay and um, so what we're going to be addressing uh, first here is how to format a message like that in which you insert the values uh, into a string that you're going to print out so you get a nice pretty message. And it turns out that this um, creating a string that has values plunked into it um, it's called in computer science uh, terms string interpolation okay um, a lot of people uh, call it formatting so for instance if you look at the couple of articles I pointed you to a few minutes ago okay um, an improved string formatting syntax formatting numbers for printing blah 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 so um in common parlance we call this formatting okay but there are really two parts to what we're doing one is we're plunking the values into the string okay that's more properly called interpolation if you want to um split hairs okay okay and then the second thing is the numbers that we're plunking into the string that's going to be the message that we're going to print uh, how can we get them to be formatted the right way a particular how can we get the number of decimal uh, digits to be uh what we intend instead of what automatically comes out of uh, python okay uh so let's what I the approach I've taken here is we're going to uh, divide this into two problems one of uh, the plunking of the number values into a string sentence okay uh loosely called formatting but more precisely called string interpolation and then the second thing we're going to go to is well then how can we get the representation of the numbers we plunk into the string to have the format that we want okay so it turns out that there are three approaches to string interpolation in python there's an old approach um there's the oldest approach there's an what i call the old approach and then there's the new approach the new approach is called f strings that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to use okay and i think i'm going to be able to demonstrate that it's a lot more convenient and easier to use excuse me and easier to read than the older two uh, approaches okay uh, they're all nice in their way okay so first i'm going to show you the oldest so we're just going to uncomment this oldest approach okay and let's run it okay before we explain it okay 
So uh, this is the first way that I get this uh, sentence that's uh, properly interpolated, okay? Uh, but the common parlance is properly formatted. I have 25 bags of sugar at five pounds per bag for a total of 125 uh, pounds. Now, I'm not saying that you always want to say this, but you have, you have a lot of call for user-friendly output where you're plunking numeric amounts or even uh, kind of optional words, okay, from time to time. It's not even a number. It's a string, okay? Um, and you want pretty output, okay? So here's the first way that we did that. And uh, so let me... Make that a little bit bigger and make that code a little bit easier to read. Here's what we've done. <clears throat> we use an approach that uses the percent sign in another context. Okay. Okay. And this, in fact, uh, uses the percent uh, sign in two different ways. So, um, so what you do is you form a string. All right. And the string is going to uh, have your message in it. In every place you want to plunk a number, you put some special variable uh, uh, notation, OK? And the simplest one is percent uh, %d, that, which is to say, I want uh, digits here, OK? So if we're using whole numbers, a percent uh, D works fine. So I have the sentence that we want to print. And every place I want to plunk a value, I have a percent uh, D. OK, well, that's pretty straightforward. But where does it get the values? Well, then after the string, the combination of the string and then a percent, this is using the percent operator in a whole new way, which says combine this string with the values in this, in uh, parentheses behind it, such that we insert the values from the, uh, from the parenthetical expression into the string. And then give me a string result. So how does this uh, work? Well, the first of the percent of Ds gets replaced by the variable quantity, the second pounds per bag, the third total weight in pounds, so that when we print it out, okay. And so what I did is I, I assigned that string result to the variable pretty message, and then I printed the pretty message. Now, could I have taken all this uh, code and just put it inside the parens on the print. Yeah, I could have, but it, it would have been a little bit harder to read. And I wasn't, uh, I wanted to make this as clear as uh, possible. In fact, it, it's probably pretty typical for people to take this uh, code and um, just to put it inside the print. OK. Um, one thing that's happening when you're doing this is if your, uh, say, sentence or the message that you're trying to uh, create is, has any length at all, you almost always have a problem with line uh, continuation. Now, um, if, you, if you can get that first string on the line, well, then um, you can wait until you open your uh, parens, and then you don't have to use the backslash to continue the line. OK, so that's OK. All right, so that's the first way. That's old, old. OK, I think it's hard to read your, um, your kind of placeholders and, and your values are separated from each other. and. Um, it was nice in its a day, but that day has passed. Now, why do we show it to you? Well, you may be maintaining code um, that uses this percent approach to um, string interpolation. Okay, and so you had better be able to read it.
Okay. I've got code around that includes uh, this. Okay. So I have to know how it works. Okay. So now the, the next version that we're going to have, okay, uses, which a lot of people call the new, but not the newest approach. But I like to call it the old approach because I'm not using it anymore. Okay. This uses a, a notation which I call dot format. And let's just uh, test it before we explain it. Okay, so we're going to test it. And why don't we run it? And I printed it right under um, the preceding approach, not because um, <clears throat> It does a good job of separating the approaches, but you can tell with your eye that those are exactly the same output. Okay. And I'll do that for the newest approach uh, too. Okay. So let's take a look at that code. All right. And again, the code we're talking about is this code right here. Okay. So what do I mean by dot format? Well, that first string that holds the message and placeholders. We've now got another style of placeholder that has curly braces around it. What we're doing is we're calling the format method on that string. Okay. And um, what does the format method do? Well, it looks in the string itself for placeholders. And it plunks the values that are in the parentheses. These, these are the uh, parameters, the actual parameters or the arguments uh, to the call to format. And again, we've got quantity, pounds per bag, total weight in pounds. Okay, and it plunks them in. And does it do a good job? Yeah, it does look back, it does a perfect uh, job. Okay. Um, all right. So what did people like about this second version? Okay. They liked that it called a method on string. Okay. The, the problem with uh, version one, okay, is that it, it had this uh, magical percent operator that really wasn't used for anything else. Okay. And that was, uh, a lot of people found that uh, kind of obtuse. All right. Whereas uh, this one, while we're just calling a function on the string, um, uh, we're just calling a method on a string, the format. And um, so, it's less magical, okay? Um, the other thing is that you were able to put numbers in these placeholders with the curly braces, and you could actually put things in a different order. So if, in fact, I wanted to put these three variables in a different order, I could have said two, one, zero. That's not a good idea, but you had a possibility that you didn't have up here. With the percents, they had to appear in the same order as the placeholders. Okay. Um, and the numbers that you can put in the placeholders, uh, again, this is uh, a typical Python uh, counting. We begin with zero and then we go up by one. Okay. Now, um, that, that's an improvement. Okay. It has a certain kind of pain in the ass quality in that the, uh, the variables that we're plunking in, okay, are separated from the, from the plunking placeholders. Okay. So that motivated, uh, the mothers and fathers, the Python to come up with the newest approach, which we think is a lot better. Okay. Oh, I also want to point out that in uh, this dot format approach, 
you also have the problem that if you if you're creating a message of any appreciable length that you have to do some you have to take an approach to line continuation okay they all have this uh, problem all right okay so let's look at at the third and final approach which is called f strings uh, which is what we're going to use in our course and what pretty much everybody who knows what's going on in Python has switched uh, to. Okay, and first let's let's just run a test. Okay, and as you can see down here, and again I'll make that type a little bigger, um, those are all exactly the same. Okay, so they all do the same. Okay, the question of uh, what's a better approach for programmers? Uh, the programmer who writes the code and the programmer who reads the code. And most uh, people today believe that this third approach, the f-string approach, is the best one. So how's it uh, different? Well, we still have placeholders that have curly braces to define them. Okay. We... Um, uh, how do we know that we're using an F string approach? Uh, well, there's a little F in front of the string. So there, there are a couple of special kind of strings in Python. Um, there's this F string. Later in the course, we'll learn about this thing called a raw string. And Python has a, uh, it taken to have us put a, a character in front of the string. Um, in the case of F strings, it's an F. Um, in the case of raw strings, which we get to well down the road in the course, it's an R. And this tells uh, Python, oh, this is a special string. It's got kind of superpowers. And the superpower is that it has these placeholders that do plunking. And the thing that recommends them is that the names of the variables to be plunked are right in the placeholders. Okay, this is the key uh, difference that makes this uh, preferable. Okay, so uh, we know what's nice is I, I just have to uh, I just have to put the f in front of the string and then. Uh, I'll put the placeholders with the variables to plunk, and then uh, Python will do the plunking for me. And I don't, you know, I don't have to call. Uh, I don't have to have a call to the to the format method. I don't need a magical percent operator. Um, I just have a magical f in front of the string, and it takes care of all the work for me. Now, I just want to point out, and here is why I made the example as long as I have, um, that, uh, again, you're going to have, a lot of times, you're going to have a line continuation issue here as well. Okay? But these are pretty easy to continue. Oh, they're all pretty easy to continue. Here's how you do it. Okay, so what I've done is that this backslash is the way that we do a line uh, continuation if we are uh, continuing a string. Okay, so we've got an F string, a backslash, an F string. So it's going to it's going to glue them together. There's an implicit concatenation here. Okay, but I'll, I'll show you how I got this. Okay, I didn't start out with this. So I'm just going to back up here. This is what this originally looked like. And the line went too long. And of course, I've got uh, a squiggly underline. It's, uh, it's going to say my line is uh, too long. Yeah, it's greater than 120 uh, characters. So in uh, PyCharm, which I really like the editor, you just have to pick a place where you want to do the continuation. Um, here we were saying pounds per bag. And it'll do this with normal strings. It'll do this with F strings. You just have to uh, click in the string, press enter, and it does a line continuation for you. Okay. 
So the line continuation issue is the same for all three versions. I just showed you some mm, alternative ways to approach it with each. Uh, but this is how, how you do that. And what people like about F strings uh, is that, uh, you know, they've got fairly high magic in Python terms, um, but they're very uh, practical because the things that you're plunking in when you're doing this interpolation uh, are, you know, the variable names are inside the curly brace placeholders. That's the whole issue. Okay, so this is what people use. It's really convenient. It solves all kinds of problems. Okay, so what I've done is, oh, uh, so this has been around, I'm trying to think where F strings came along, maybe in Python 3.6. Okay, it was after I created the courseware that we have uh, in our course. Uh, I did that when we had Python 3.5. And so I'm just now here in the current uh, teaching world on Python 3.9. I'm just now, I'm so committed to F strings and I, and I see that people um, in the Python programmer world agree with me. Um, I'm going back and I'm changing all this, uh, what yeah, people loosely called formatting, but again is more technically called string interpolation, I'm doing it everywhere with F strings. And that's what I want you to do in the course. All right, so F strings, that's what we're using. Okay, and again, there's no reason why uh, you have to do this in two operations, right? Um, it's possible to take this string or this expression, this is a combination of strings, and plunk it right into the print, right? So I'm gonna try to do this. So let's cut this out of here and let's put this in here and let's get rid of this. And this should work just fine. So if we run this again, uh, it worked uh, fine. So I'm not claiming that you need to assign it to a variable and then print the variable. I just didn't want it to be more uh, complex than it needed to be when w we were uh, teaching the skill. Okay. All right. That's that. All right. Um, so that's uh, whatever you want to call it. Call it plunking. Call it formatting call it string interpolation. That's the skill. How do you do it? F strings. All right, is that all we need to know? Well, uh, no. <laughs> okay, because if you want to print um, user-friendly output in uh, Python um, with numbers, uh, it's one thing, you know, to plunk the values into a string and print it out. The next thing is, what about float values and how many uh, fractional uh, digits they have after the decimal uh, point? Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to take a look at is a program called uh, uh, 10, Sources of Excess decimal fraction uh, digits, okay? Um, and I have a, I have a, uh, I have a reference here to this uh, class ACE article um, that will help you refresh uh, the terminology in your mind for math. Okay, I think this is third grade math. Okay, and um, we learn the formal terms for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And somewhere along the line, most of us forget them. Okay, um, the one that we're going to spend the most uh, time on uh, in this course is division. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger. But the 
uh, what what are the names of the terms in division? Well, the first one, the thing that we're dividing is called the dividend. The second one, the thing we're dividing by is called the divisor. And then the answer is called the quotient. Okay. And again, it's pretty easy to forget that. Okay. Now, what about multiplication? Well, again, it's pretty easy to forget and in, in all the years that go by. If you're not a math major or a math teacher or a third grade math student, you might have forgotten that in multiplication, the first of the terms is called a multiplicand or a factor. The second is a multiplier, or you could call it a factor. And then the answer is called a product. Okay. Um, and then uh, we're also going to do a subtraction in this. So uh, the first term, okay, in a subtraction is called a minuend. Boy, that takes me back to my grade school years. The second term is called a subtrahend. And then the answer is called the difference. Likewise, if we're doing addition, where's addition? Oh, yeah. The first one is called an addend. The second term is called an addend. OK. And the answer is called a sum. Now, we use that pretty freely even on into our, our our normal non-math uh, uh, major adult lives. So I give you this link, and in years past I've used other links. I like this one uh, today. I give you I give you this article because um, most of us have forgotten the proper names uh, for the terms in third grade arithmetic because we've learned a lot of other things that have squeezed them out. All right, so that's that. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here are, what are the sources of XS decimal fraction digits, okay, um, when we're working with Python floats? Okay, and what do we mean by excess? I mean more more decimal places than we're interested in, either because they're unsightly, or maybe they're misleading. Maybe I think everybody understands what I mean by unsightly. They're kind of hard to read and ugly. All right, but sometimes, um, sometimes uh, we create these values that sort of imply a precision um, that don't doesn't really exist um, in the number because of the precision of uh, of our original uh, terms um, when the answer has a lot more decimal uh, digits it implies a precision in the answer that's really not true okay so we're gonna f we're going to look at two solutions um, to, to, uh, to getting rid of the extra digits that we don't want to show, okay? But let's, you know, here we're exploring how do they come into being, okay? So as usual, I'm just going to take the parts that I'm not ready to demonstrate yet, and I'm going to toggle them into a comment, okay? Okay, so... Uh, here the dividend is 1, the divisor is 3, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to calculate the quotient, that's the answer, as the dividend divided by the divisor. And you notice I'm doing um, float uh, division, that's what the slash is. And you notice I put 1.0 and 3.0 to make sure that these are float values. Okay, and what am I gonna get? Well, I'm gonna get a decimal fraction that repeats. Okay, and what if I wanted to print a pretty result? Well, I could say dividend 
divided by divisor equals quotient. But what does that look like? It's going to have too many decimal places. Uh, around the old one. Let's run the new one. Okay, so yeah, let's let's make that a little bigger and okay. So 1.0 divided by 3.0 equals 0 0.33333. Now I want to point out uh, two things here. One of it uh, has to do with uh, these extra digits that we're eventually going to want to find ways to get rid of. Okay, but the other is a typography thing. You'll notice that I haven't put a period at the end of the sentence. And normally I don't, okay? And the reason is it's very hard for the eye to, to realize that this is not a decimal point. Now, when we see uh, fractional decimals uh, printed in textbooks and such, in sentences that end in period, um, the, the fact is that normally they don't look confusing because the numbers are in a slightly different font than the period that ends the sentence. And our brain takes a cue that that's not a decimal point. But here, we're, we've got all one font, okay? And our brain does not take the cue, okay? So if you're going to end a sentence with a float, that it is going to include a decimal a point. Just leave the period off the sentence. I have found over the years that I've been uh, practicing that that's the best way to not confuse the reader. Okay, so uh, too many threes. Why? Because this is a repeating, repeating fraction. And why doesn't it go on forever? Well, these are just, these are the digits of um, precision uh, that we have in a uh, Python float. And so it's only going to show us the detail that it has. Oh, okay. And that's fine. That's plenty of detail. That's more than we're interested in. Okay. So um, it, it, division is a key place where we get these excess decimal fraction uh, digits. Okay, can we do it with multiplication? Yeah, it turns out we can do it with multiplication uh, two. Okay, and the way that we do that is with we multiply float values that have a decimal fraction part themselves. Okay, so here you can see that the multiplicand is 1.25, the multiplier is 1.75, we're going to calculate the product as the multiplicand times the multiplier. And then we're going to use the F string approach to uh, print out a pretty little uh, message that says multiplicand times multiplier equals uh, product. Okay. And so we're going to come down here. We're going to run this again. And we're going to see, I'll just make that a little bigger there. Uh, 1.25 times 1.75 equals 2.1875. Okay, and that's the right answer. Okay, but um, especially if we're dealing with, say, dollars and cents, okay, we don't want to show fractional cents. Okay, so that might be, not always, but that might be more digits in the decimal fraction than you're interested in seeing. Okay, less misleading, more um, just inconvenient. Okay, now these, these two that we've been through so far are pretty much expected. Oh, okay, I bet you're not at all surprised by those, but when I give you the third and last of these that I'm going to show, you're going to be disappointed in uh, Python uh, floats, okay? Um, and this is a problem. Uh, Python floats uh, work like floats in just about every other computer language these days. Um, so it's not a problem with Python. It's a problem with floating point number representation. Floating point number representation is really cool stuff, 
okay? It just has a couple of warts on it um, that we put up with, okay? And this is one of the warts. Okay, so here um, we're going to do a subtraction. So the starting value, the menu end, <laughs> I had forgotten that for sure. Uh, the And then the second one, the thing we are subtracting from it, the subtrahend is 1.0. So 1.2 less 1.0. And to us, that's equal to 0.2. Okay, so that that's a no-brainer, right? Okay, unfortunately, when when we do the subtraction and then we we print this, the difference is not going to just be 0.2, and that's because of this thing that um, it's a floating point wart. You, you see it called a lot of things, but I think it's probably best called floating point anomaly. Okay. So let's run this and get uh, it disappointed, okay? So this says, this says that 1.2 minus 1.0 equals 0 0.1999999996. Well, it does not, <laughs> okay? Now, um, you can do some reading and you'll find out that floating point values have two two problems that cause anomalies uh one problem is that we only keep so many digits of precision okay in fact the number that you see here okay and then the other one is that these values are being represented in base 2 and not in base uh, 10. so the combination of those two um they're part of the power of floats. They're the reason why they work so fast, and they make a lot of they make a lot of uh, computing problems feasible to solve. Okay, but the worst aspect also comes from that as well. That we get these things that are supposed to be no-brainer um, things. You know, we're expecting it to see point it's to say 0 0.2 or 0 0.20 and we get this horrible approximation of it okay and that's one of the most disappointing things to me okay so this is the reality of math with floating points and there there are two uh there there are two I'm sorry, there are three approaches to solving this. One is to not work with floats, okay? So um, we don't, this isn't officially a part of the course, although we do have, uh, we do have a challenge uh, problem uh, in, in our current, uh, in our current assignment for chapter three that invites the student to go explore this. But there is another type there is another numeric uh, type in uh, Python. Uh, what we're learning about is we're learning about ints and floats, okay? There is a decimal type, okay? And the decimal type um, maybe isn't as efficient as the float, but it doesn't have these anomaly problems, okay? And then there are uh, certain users of Python Maybe people who are doing accounting and such things who don't want uh, this uh, kind of funny stuff, who instead of using floats for dollars and cents will use uh, uh, decimals. Now, that's not the majority of the users, okay? Most people use uh, floats, okay? And so that's why that's what we cover in the course. And if you look at any, bas any basic uh, uh, Python uh, text, they typically don't cover the decimal uh, type. Okay, so that's a sort of extra, qu uh, extra credit uh, uh, kind of question, right? So that's one thing that you can do. But that's not the approaches that I'm, I'm going to teach you. Um, the two approaches, one is to remove the extra digits uh, using an approach called rounding and the other is to uh, to hide and control the excess 
digits using an approach called formatting. Okay, so we're not going to go to the decimal uh, stuff that's, you know, beyond our current approach. But let's look at this rounding approach. Okay, so I've called this uh, uh, program uh, removing excess digits using rounding. And why do I say removing? Okay, well, when you round, okay, the value that you get back, uh, okay, uh, has the extra digits removed. Okay. Um, and you can store it like that. You can keep that value. Okay. And it's always going to have the extra uh, digits removed. Okay. That's why I mean by removed. So let's take the first example here. Okay. I'll toggle the other ones into a comment. And let's, so this is the, um, this is really pretty much the same code that we had uh, the last time where we saw we got extra uh, digits from division. Okay, so uh, the code through here is the same. We have the dividend, the divisor, and then we calculate the quotient. But here what we're doing is we're creating a new variable called rounded quotient. And we're calling a function, a built-in function called round. And we pass it the unrounded value. And as the second uh, parameter, we pass an int that says, how many, how many decimal uh, digits do we want to round it to? In this case, we say two. And then we print using an F string. Uh, and we use rounded quotient. And so instead of getting uh, 0 0.3333333, we're going to get just 0 0.33. Let's uh, see that work. Okay, so here's the result here. 1.0 divided by 3.0 equals 0 0.33. Okay, okay, and we could we could print this rounded quotient over and over again, and we have really eliminated the extra decimal uh, digits. They're gone. Okay, that's that's how rounding works. And we typically use it when we want to save the rounded value to do future calculations with. Okay, because we've eliminated the extra uh, digits. Okay. Okay, so let's see the same approach um, uh, applied to the extra uh, digits that can come from multiplication, okay? So I toggle that out of a comment, and we'll run that again. Okay, and uh, instead of getting, you know, 2.19 blah, 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 or 2.18 blah, 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 blah. We just say 1.25 times 1.75 equals 2.19. Now, is rounding to two digits the right way to go? Well, it depends on what your application is. If it's uh, dollars and cents, well, uh, uh, that makes sense. It two digits, okay? So it depends on what your use for the value is when you figure out how many uh, digits um, you would like uh, to show. But what I really want to emphasize here is that when we're rounding, it's not only a matter of what we show, it's a matter of what we store because this variable, rounded product, now holds the value that's been rounded. And so, again, the extra digits have been jettisoned. We've eliminated them. Okay? We're not just hiding them. They're gone. All right? And now we've got the third and very disappointing example of the extra digits we got through uh, 
uh, a floating point anomaly, okay? And so we are calculating the difference. We were expecting 1.2 minus 1.0 is going to be 0.2. We got this horrible 1.9999999 number. And now if we round it to two uh, fractional uh, decimal uh, places, uh, it's going to say uh, 0 0.20. Okay, so let's run that and see what that did. Ah, now this is interesting because it didn't say 0 0.20, okay? Even though we rounded it to two decimal places, okay? All right, uh, what we did is we got rid of the anomaly and when, when we printed this, um, it just printed out the the uh, the digits that were left and it didn't print out the final zero because we never really told it okay we're forming we're formatting this we're going to control this so it's two decimal uh, digits okay we just said get rid of the anomaly after two decimal digits so one of the differences between rounding and formatting is you might get uh, you might get a, a value that's actually shorter than the polite value that you'd like to show. Okay, there's there's no way just using rounding that we can force it to uh, to print 0 0.20. Now, when we get to formatting, we're going to be able to do that. Okay, so um, why do we want to use rounding? We typically use rounding as opposed to formatting when we want to save the answer with the with these uh, extra uh, 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 digits uh, eliminated or r removed. Okay. Um, as a result, you don't see a lot of rounding. You'll see a lot of formatting because people. Eh, it turns out that even if you're continuing to do uh, calculations uh, with uh, uh, the value, and it, it has some extra digits in the, in the decimal uh, places, most practitioners don't worry about them, okay? They're pretty far to the right of the decimal point. They're not very big, and they don't seem to create anomalies that people worry about that much, okay? Uh, and so you'll find a lot of people are formatting the extra uh, uh, digits away rather than rounding them. All right. All right. So let's take a look at formatting. Okay. Because that's probably the most popular way to get rid of the extra digits. Okay. So I call this, let's see, I call this hiding and controlling excess digits using formatting. And let's take this and again we're going to toggle the parts we're not working on into a comment. Okay, so i uh, going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so here's the division again. Okay, so I, I just did the division to create the quotient, okay? And now I, I've, uh, I'm using the F string to, to print out the polite version, okay? I'm not putting a period at the end of the sentence because a lot of people find that confusing uh, when, uh, you know, the last thing in the sentence is a decimal fraction. Okay, so we say dividend divided by divisor equals quotient. And then we have uh, a colon. And it turns out that in addition to doing string interpolation, uh, these formatting approaches do formatting as well. Okay, and so the format specifier, 
which is a string in its own right, comes after the colon. So it's variable colon format specifier. And this one says 0.2f. Now we're going to learn about a lot of um, a lot of these. Uh, okay, what kind of format specifiers are available? And I just want to point you to this, the best article, formatting numbers uh, for printing in Python. And if you go through on this, you'll see a lot of examples of things that you can do with formatting. Okay. And um, uh, let's, let's look at the one. Oh, so it, it, this one right here where we say uh, we have an F string. He has the variable X, not well named. Okay, colon 0.3F. So he wants three digits to the right of, uh, of the decimal point. And what will it print? Well, here in the comment they're saying it's going to be uh, 0.434. Okay, so that's how we control it. Okay, there's a lot of other things that we can do. Uh, we can add in comma, comma separators for thousands and millions and stuff. Uh, we can we can do percentages. Um, well, those are probably the three things that we can do with numbers. Now, in our course, we're going to get to all of those. But for right now, we're looking on, we're looking at uh, controlling the decimal uh, places. We're looking at this uh, 0.3F. Okay, that's what we're looking at. All right, so let's come back over here. So here we said 0.2F, so we're saying that we want to see this value quotient uh, but we only want to show the first two uh, decimal uh, places. Okay, well, is it going to just lop it off or is it going to round it? It's going to round it. Oh, okay, so it includes rounding, okay, but it's not rounding in the same sense that we explicitly rounded it because it had we called round, um, and save the value, well then we would have had a rounded value to continue on with our calculations. Whereas here, yes, we do get the value of rounding, but all we're doing is formatting this for consumption. The variable quotient still has the extra digits after the decimal point. We haven't changed that. We're just showing something more politely what we'd like to show. So let's give that a run. Okay. And here we say 1.0 divided by 3.0 equals 0 0.33. Now, again, is two digits the right number of uh, decimal points? Well, you don't know unless you know what what you're using this for, okay? For me, it seemed okay. I did too, okay? If you read, again, if you're doing a, a, a dollars and cents, if it's one dollar divided by three, well, 0 0.33 uh, looks like the right answer, 33 cents. So you, as the programmer, you get to choose uh, how many digits we're going to see to the right of the decimal. And of course, we can do this same thing if the digits were, if the excess digits came from a multiplication. I mean, it works the same for all of these. Okay, so here, uh, 1.25 times 1.75 equals 2.19. Okay, two digits is going to be a good uh, choice if it's uh, dollars and cents. Okay, you may you may want more, but you as the programmer you get to choose, and this also works uh, with uh, floating point anomalies. Okay, so 
again, uh, we had 1.2 minus 1.0, and we were we we're expecting the difference to be 0.2. Okay, now the last time that we got this, it came out as 0.2, but what if we wanted to show two decimal uh, places? Well, this controls the number of decimal places that you show. So if we give it a 0.2f, it's going to say 0.20. Let's see. And there we go. 1.2 minus 1.0 equals 0 0.20. Again, uh, uh, you decide what you want to show. Okay, so um, these extra digits, well, let's just uh, kind of go back. Um, this string interpolation is plunking values into a string um, in order to get a user-friendly message. And the best way to do this and the way that we're going to do it in our class is if strings. Okay, that's the first thing we took to look at. Uh, the second thing that we took a uh, look at was uh, what are the sources of, of these excess decimal fraction uh, digits uh, when we're working with floats? I say Python floats here, uh, but it's all floats. Okay, there is a standard for floating point arithmetic that is implemented by Python and Java and C and Rust and everything that uses uh, floats. Okay, so you're going to see this um, behavior everywhere. It's not unique to Python floats. Okay, and we could see that they can come from a division or multiplication with um, uh, decimal fractions or from um, a floating point math that yields these anomalies. Okay, and we saw that one way to solve it is using round, okay, and when you use round to solve it, you get to save the answer, and those extra uh, digits are, um, you know, kind of lopped off the answer, and you can use the answer again in further uh, calculations. Um, and some people think that's really important to do, although I've got to say that most practitioners um, are pretty comfortable with uh, continuing to use the product even with uh, the extra uh, digits because even if they think the extra uh, digits are somehow anomalous, uh, they're very, very small values, okay? And they tend to cancel each other out over time, okay? And then um, uh, the last thing, so I uh, characterize that as removing the excess uh, digits because you save the value with the excess uh, digits uh, gone. And then the most popular approach is uh, this formatting approach, which is the last thing that we looked at. Uh, and when you're doing it with F strings, um, you're showing something that kind of looks like this. Uh, so wherever you want to format the value, in addition to having this placeholder, um, in addition to naming the variable, you have a colon, then you have a format string. And the first of the format strings for numbers that we're learning is this point, uh, you know, point 0.2f, point 0.5f, you know, whatever you want to do, where you control the number of the decimal uh, places that you're going to show. Okay, so uh, pretty cool stuff. It allows you to turn out output that... Um, is going to um, it's going to please your users. It's going to be what they want. You know, you don't. You not only want to give them the answer that they need. You want to present it in the format that they're uh, that they prefer. Okay, 
and the combination of f strings and uh, the uh, formatting, you know, the point 2f, point 3f, point 5f uh, uh, formatting is going to give them the answers that they're ready to use immediately. Okay, that's it for uh, this uh, subject. I'll leave you um, uh, until the next time. I'll say bye-bye.